Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to take a close look at how to figure out the distance of the stars beyond those that we could measure with the angle of parallax. If you remember, if you remember in the previous video, we found out how they were able to measure the distance to the nearest hundred stars or so simply because by taking the uh, by measuring the position of the stars from various vantage points in the Earth's orbit we could actually measure a difference in that angle which was then known as the angle of parallax which enabled us to find the distance to those stars. But that method was only really valid to the 100 near stars because any stars beyond that, any stars beyond 15, 16 light years had such a small angle of parallax that we could just simply not measure that angle. So how did we figure out the distance to the stars beyond that? Well, it turned out it was actually as a result of a number of things that we discovered, a number of the properties of stars, temperatures, wavelengths, things like that. So we're going to take a look at some of these to be able to understand how they've been beyond the angle of parallax to find the distance to even further stars. So the first thing we want to learn about is what we call Wien's Law. Wilhelm Wien was a physicist slash astronomer slash scientist who was very intelligent and he discovered that the radiation coming from an object could be determined if we can exclude all the other radiation. And he did that by developing what we call a black box. So he, what he did was simply take a box and he drilled a small little hole in it. Now, it really didn't have anything to do with the color of the box. But what happens is when you drill a small little hole in a box, even though the box inside may be painted white, and you look through that little hole, the inside of that box will look black. And the reason for that is because the radiation coming from the box is simply a result of the temperature of the inside of the box, not as a result of any light reflected that might have entered the box from the outside because the hole is so small that by the time the light scatters around, almost none of it makes it back out and therefore you don't see any light coming out. Just the radiation coming out from the temperature of the inside of the box. And Wien was able to make a relationship between the wavelength of that radiation and the temperature of the box. And he also realized that the distribution of the radiation, because it wasn't a single wavelength of radiation coming from the box, it was a distribution of wavelengths. And the distribution looked like this. And this is what we know as a black body radiation curve, where some of it has smaller wavelengths, some of it has bigger wavelengths. So the bottom of the axis here is wavelengths, the vertical axis here is intensity, so we call that the black body radiation curve. And he realized that there was this distribution of radiations coming from it, but at one point there was a peak, meaning one particular frequency or one particular wavelength of radiation was more abundant than all the other ones, and so he centered on that. And he said, I can find the temperature of this object by knowing what this number is. So if you can measure the radiation coming from a black body, and you figure out the peak wavelength, and you throw that into the equation that we came up with, where the temperature of the object therefore is equal to this constant divided by the wavelength and that enabled him to find the temperature of that object. He received the Nobel Prize for that discovery in 1911 for work he did in the late 1890s. And so now, for example, let's say we take the sun, which the radiation of the sun is kind of like a black body. Now you say, well, wait a minute, the sun doesn't look black at all. Why can the sun be a black body? It's because the radiation coming from the sun is solely from the sun and not from scattering any light from any other source. The sun is, of course, so bright that there's no other light that can be reflected off the sun or scattered off the sun. So the radiation from the sun is purely from the source, just like the radiation from a black body is purely from coming from inside the box and not from any light being scattered or reflected from anywhere else. And so when he applied that equation, uh, to, the, uh, to the radiation coming from the sun, and of course the sun is a yellow star, and the yellow star has a wavelength, a peak wavelength of about, um, ooh, not 580 nanometers, it's more like about 500 nanometers. So make this 500, 500. So if you then plug this number, 500 nanometers, into Wien's law, we should be able to figure out the temperature of the sun. And that's what he did. So he said, well, the temperature of the sun is equal to 0 0.0029 Kelvin times meters, divided by the wavelength coming from the star, which is 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And when you work that out in your calculator, you get 5,800 Kelvin. Wow, that was quite a discovery. We're now able to determine the temperature of objects simply by knowing their radiation curve, their black body radiation curve. 
You might have noticed that when you have an electric stove at home, and you turn the plates all the way up to high, the plate begins to glow. As the temperature gets hotter, the radiation shifts to shorter and shorter wavelengths, and eventually it goes from the infrared into the visible wavelength, and red light begins to emanate from that hot plate. So that's an example of bloody back, ooh, black body radiation. And so now we also began to realize that we have stars of different colors. And we also realized that the, for the stars of different colors, and notice I don't have a yellow pen, so I put the orange dotted line, and I don't have a white pen. Even if I had one, it wouldn't show up on the whiteboard, so I made a dotted black line there. So we had stars of these different colors, and we noticed that those stars would have different black body radiation curves. Stars that were redder would have curves that looked a little bit more like this. Oh, and it wouldn't quite go this high, I think. I'm exaggerating this curve a little bit. Let me redraw that. It will look a little bit more like this. And then uh, black body radi radiation curves or blue stars, it would look more like this. And you can see that the peak of the radiation would fall at different wavelengths. So red stars would have shorter uh, would have, uh, I'm sorry, longer wavelengths and blue light, blue stars would have shorter wavelengths and white stars would have wavelengths in between and so forth. So then we began to make that relationship realizing that stars have different temperatures and those temperatures are related to their colors because stars put out what we call black body radiation and the temperature of those stars can therefore be determined simply by knowing where the peak of the radiation is and maybe what I should write here is lambda sub zero that indicates the peak wavelength, just my way of indicating that. All right, so now we have another weapon in our repertoire, or maybe I should call it a tool. It's not a weapon per se, but a tool in order to determine the distance of stars. We now have the relationship between their color and their temperature. And now coupled with another law, which is called the Stefan's Boltzmann's law, we now will have the information necessary to try and determine the distance to even further stars. So in the next video, we'll attack the Stefan Boltzmann's law. And when we put those two concepts together, there were two very famous astronomers that came up with a very ingenious method to then determine the distance of stars even further than what we're able to measure with the angle of parallax. So if you're interested, stay tuned and we'll show you some more of these interesting discoveries they made just about 100, 150 years ago.